Okay, welcome back. Um, this episode we're going to deal with the cylinder. So here are the parts we're going to need. Uh, the cylinder casting, we've got the cylinder bottom cover and the countersunk screws to fix it. The cylinder top cover, nuts and studs to fix it. Here we've got the gland and studs and nuts to fix the gland. Piston rod, piston rod top end, nut, piston, piston ring, and the drain cocks. The drain cocks were an optional extra, they're not supplied as part of the standard kit, but you do need drain cocks because we've got holes drilled and tapped in the cylinder. The drain cocks are needed because when you start the engine it's cold and the steam will condense inside the cold piston, um, condense back to water, and you need the drain cocks to drain the water out. We'll start looking at the cylinder casting. This is the valve face with the exhaust port in the middle and the two inlet ports either side. Okay, the inlet ports connect through to the top of the piston here and the bottom of the piston on the other end. The first thing I'm going to do is take a piece of soft wire and push it through the steam ports to make sure there's no casting sound left in there. And as we can see, there is some casting sound left in there. Now that all needs to be got out because casting sand inside the piston when the engine's running will wreck the piston ring and the piston. And if it gets through to the valve, it won't do much for the valve either. And you can see how much crud is coming out of there. Okay, I, I shall finish that off camera because it's quite awkward to do. Okay, we're back. That took longer than expected. And it turns out those ports were almost completely blocked with sand. I ended up having to force water through the ports from the kitchen tap which got me a bit wet and got sand all over the sink, but now the ports are clear. We take the bottom cover. Bottom cover is fixed to the cylinder by six countersunk screws. It's got a cutout carved in here. I'm not quite sure why this cutout is here. I can't see any reason for it on the drawings and the drawings don't clearly show which way it's supposed to go. But it, it's shown on the drawing, so there must be some reason. But I shall put it underneath the valve chest and hope that's right. So that fits on like that. And you can see it locates nice and firmly. Let me take our six countersunk screws and screw these in. It's best to leave them all loose until they're all in. Now you'll notice, uh, or you may have noticed, there should have been a gasket in there. I deliberately left the gasket out because I don't want to damage the gasket when I take it apart. It should run okay without the gaskets. It'll obviously leak a little bit, but won't worry too much about that. And when I strip it down to assemble it properly, then all the gaskets will be put in, of course. But now looking at this quite closely, you can see the screws aren't all perfectly seated home. For example, this one is definitely slightly off. And if I look, you can just see the cylinder hasn't got, the cover hasn't gone home quite properly. Now, as it went home when the screws weren't in, I think the screws are either a little bit misaligned or possibly a tad too small. So what I'm going to do is take this apart again and then I'll ease the screw holes with the round file and then reassemble it. 
So here we are, I've just eased these out ever so slightly with a needle file. I've also deburred these holes with a flat needle file. And what I noticed was that there is a slight radius in this spigot. And the spigot is actually a good fit inside the cylinder. So that radius was actually stopping the um, end cover going down properly. So what I've done is I've very carefully filed a chamfer all around the uh, end of the cylinder. It's only a small chamfer, maybe a quarter of a millimeter. And now, this actually fits much better. Okay, so easing those holes has worked a treat because I can see now all these countersunk screws are going down into the countersunks nice and squarely. And there's no gap at all that I can see. Um, if there is a slight gap, it'll be taken up by the gasket. All right, now we turn our attention to the piston. Piston has got a rubber O-ring. So we shall add a little bit of oil. This is actually a fairly thick chain oil. It's all I've got handy at the moment. Put that on. And the piston, Piston rod goes on from this side, it screws in. And there's a nut to go on to lock it in place. Now we take the cylinder top end cover. We look closely, this has actually got a nice step here there's no uh, radius so that should go into the cylinder quite nicely um, on the top we've got the gland and the way this works is there's a recess in here the piston rod comes through here we ride some graphited yarn around here and push it in this recess then the gland cover goes over here and that goes and squeezes the graphited yarn which then makes a nice steam tight seal around the piston rod without providing too much friction. So the top cover is held in by six studs. Have a dry fit first and make sure that yes, it fits nicely. It's going down solid, so no problem. So now we fit six studs. And these only need to go finger tight. Now, just try this to make sure it fits nicely, and it doesn't. Now, you can just about see there's a huge gap where the cover isn't going down square. Now, we know it went down square before, so this must be a minor misalignment on the holes. So again, I shall take my needle file and just ease out the holes a little bit. Right, we're back again. What I discovered was that this would actually fit quite nicely 
in this orientation. Of course, in this orientation, we've got the gland going this way, which is not parallel to the valve chest. Um, and that would just look completely wrong. What I think has happened is that the studs, the circle of the studs isn't quite concentric with the circle of the bore, which is why it fits like that, but not like that. Okay, so what I did was I just eased these holes out with a slightly larger drill, just about 0.1 of a millimeter over size. Um, these are clearance holes for this, doesn't matter, and the location is done by the spigot here. And that enlarging those holes just a fraction has allowed this to fit in this direction. So now we have the gland, which is nice and parallel to the valve chest, now it, which will look much better. Next job is to insert the piston that we made earlier. Then we put the cylinder cover on and fix it with six 7BA nuts. Uh, next job is to fit the studs for the uh, gland. Again, just finger tight. Okay, next the piston gland goes on, followed by two 7BA nuts. And check to make sure the piston moves nice and smoothly. Again, you'll have noticed I didn't bother putting the graphited yarn in there just yet. That'll go in when we uh, assemble the engine um, after finishing. Okay, the next job is to put the top of the piston rod on. This just screws in. Again, finger tight. It could do with going tighter and when I finally assemble it, it'll get some thread lock. And the last job is to add the two drain cocks. And that completes a piston assembly. The next job will be to fit the valve chest in the valve and we'll cover that next time. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, click the bell icon, all the usual YouTube stuff. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Now the inlet ports connect through
Focus, you bugger. Oh, come on, focus. Why wouldn't you focus? Why? Right, so the dragon cox. So again, I shall take my needle file and just ease out the holes a little bit. Oops, that makes the camera wobble. 